Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Sadie Hamblin. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey, Sadie, how's it going? Good. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, let's get this show started. So tell us a little bit about you. Like, what do you actually do? I am a real estate agent. Uh, I'm licensed in Ohio and Michigan. I concentrate, though, on Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan. So I'm not traveling, you know, from one extreme to the other every day. But yeah. I like it. I like it. So when you were uh, when you were younger, so what you had planned for your future? What did you have planned? It was not what I had planned, but I've always been in positions where um, my income is controlled pretty much on how hard I work. So I wanted to stay somewhat in that field. Uh, I started off uh, young and I bartended. And of course, you control your own income. I went to school for medical transcription, and that was based on bonus pay, how hard I could work, how fast I could type. And then when that was transitioning out and they were going into more of a voice recognition system, I thought, what am I going to do with my life? I'm, you know, 35 years old at this point. And what am I going to do? And um, I had a friend in real estate and she's like, I think you'd be great at it. And I just started venturing into it from there. And I love it. I feel like it was the path of least resistance and found my calling. So I like it. I like it. When you first started out in real estate, how did that transition go for you from, I know when you were working medical transcription over to real estate, how did you schedule your days when you first started? Because I know that's a bit of a difference with the timing and everything. Uh, Yeah, you know, I worked from home for 10 years. So I worked from home doing the transcription. So I was pretty much a 24 hour a day person with work to not being able to let it go, not being able to shut it (laughs) off at night. So Uh, That helped me with real estate because I always knew, um, you know, there's so many talented real estate agents, but the one thing I kind of always, you know, had a chip on my shoulder about was no one could work harder than me. And uh, that was from coming from medical transcription. I I work so much. I thought that was a good, good feature to have. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And I'm sure it plays a role into real estate as well. I mean, your phone's always going off, I'm sure. There's no weekends, it is. there's no vacations, so. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, that's been the one thing my my brokers and, and my peers have said, like, you know, you need to shut off sometimes, and it's something I'm still working on. Haven't learned that yet, but. <laughs> it's a hard one to, to wrap your head around and then actually do it. You have to follow through with it. Right. It's one thing saying, yes. yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to time block, and this time is my time, but then yes. to actually follow yeah. through with it, yeah, that's, that's another story. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. When you first started out in real estate, did you get any advice that helped you throughout the first couple of years? Yeah. You know, I think um, one of the biggest things someone said to me that meant a lot to me was, you know, which is true, I feel like in every area of life, sort of, you know, even in the Google review world we live in, um, people sometimes don't always say they had a great experience. They don't always remember great experiences, but um, a bad one they never forget. So yeah. I always, that was always in the back of my mind and in all the pressure to make sure no one ever has a bad experience, which is, can be difficult in real estate. So. Yeah, definitely. Since I know in this market, especially things are way more stressful than they were a couple of years ago um, with that. So getting those bad reviews yeah. is not ideal, but it is something that people are going to remember more than the good times. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You know, it's hard when you can't control every aspect of a a transaction. So it's, it's was a good balancing act for me to figure out like, okay, I can't take this on because I'm doing everything, you know, I can. And, and so far so good. It's worked out for me. I don't think I've had anybody that's left feeling, you know, that they didn't have a good experience. Yeah, that's awesome. Switching this questions around a little bit, what is the worst property or showing you think you've been to? I know being a real estate agent, you see quite a few different things. So what is the worst yeah. one? What one sticks out to you the most? Uh, I work with a lot of waterfront properties and I happen okay. to be showing two that were right next door to each other to the same buyer. 
and uh, they were vacant. So as you know, waterfront has spiders and, and bugs and things like that. So I was standing there unlocking the front door and they had a slap deck and I felt something crawl up my pant leg. Oh no. And <laughs> new buyers never met them. I very casually reached up my pant leg and pulled out something of a long black tail. And it did not go well. I almost lost my pants in front of my new buyer, <laughs> but what I managed to pull this bug out. And that was definitely mm. the worst uh, showing I had. And we still managed to find them a different house. So that worked. They didn't end up getting that one. <laughs> right. No, no. But I was hysterical for a minute and I was like, oh, I hope this isn't a bad first impression. So <laughs> when you were saying the long black tail on it, I was thinking a snake. That was what I was thinking too. I was like, oh no, yeah. a snake did not go up your pants. Yeah. Please tell me that. <laughs> no, actually it was like um, almost some form of a cricket, but it had this like long tail to it. So I still don't know what it is. And I feel like I sleep better not knowing fully <laughs> what it was. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't do good with that situation either. I would. You handled it probably a lot better than I would have. That's for <laughs> sure. I would have been screaming. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. What kind of goals do you got for like the next uh, rest of the year? Well, I um I recently moved. I was from the same area in Point Place, which is uh, in Toledo, Ohio, and so I was from that area, born and raised. And I recently moved to Estro Beach in Michigan. And so my goals for the next year are to become more acclimated to the area and you know networking up the way and, you know, kind of get to know people better up here, other agents, you know, clients, things like that. Are you right on the border? I'm not 100% sure where that is, your new location. Yes, okay. I am right on the border. That's what so I was, um, I was the last exit in Ohio, and now I am the 20th exit in Michigan. So we're <laughs> we're really close. Yeah. <laughs> but you do you still do both in both states, right? You still do? Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. I like it. I like it. So yeah. let's say you had to start all over today with all the same knowledge you have now. How would you spend your first thousand dollars? Hmm. I guess the first thousand dollars I would spend um, probably would be, you know, business cards. I feel like people take and they lose a lot, and it's just not something that everyone holds on to nowadays. So I probably would start off instead of business cards and the more paper route, um, networking and doing some more social media advertising at the beginning. I like it. I like it. That's awesome. So since um, we were kind of all locked down last year, what what is one big thing that has changed in your business since last year? Um, something like this, like where I used to go into the office and have meetings. And now I sort of try to find the quietest place in my home <laughs> to have, you know, Zoom meetings with clients and things like that. So that was definitely a new area for me. <laughs> Did you use Zoom at all prior to the shutdown? I know I didn't. This It was all new to me when we shut down. Yeah, I did not. Yeah. No. And I am so much of a people person. I love being in person, but it's it's a different area seeing yourself on camera and seeing yourself talk and, and yeah. not knowing where to look. There was a big learning curve. <laughs> did you have to do the showings over Zoom as well? I know for a little I while. I was lucky enough. Yeah. Um, Michigan shut down completely mm -hmm. for a while, so we were not able to work at all. And Ohio was pretty much working, um, you know, on the mask mandate. We wore masks and did, you know, all the precautions, and we were still able to show. So that was a oh, good nice. thing. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Do you have any business books that you have read or any book in general um, that you recommend to anybody in the business at all? You know, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, feel like it's one that's used a lot, but um, I read that and, you know, it, it really resonated with me and, you know, watching, you know, my upbringing and things like that. And I passed that book recommendation down to my kids. And I do think it's a good thing, you know, to have that idea of working for yourself or working for someone else. It's good to read. That's awesome. I like it. How can people get a hold of you? 
You can call or text anytime. Here's my balance not coming in again of not knowing when to stop <laughs> working, but 419-481-1433, or you can reach me at sadie at danberry.com by email. Awesome. Hey, thanks for coming on and sharing your story with us today. Thank you. It was nice talking with you guys. Are these working? All right. There we go. Oh, there we go. I think they're working. Should we tell them? Uh, Mine keeps falling. It doesn't like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we do? We got to point out? Hey, I think there's a subscription button. Like, it might be. It might be there. It might be right there, too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. And red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess uh I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah, I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. We should probably tell them also give us a five-star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't take but, four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this No, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. <laughs>